Hello, everyone. Welcome. We'll get started here in a minute. Wait for everyone to file in. David, how are you today? I am. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, I've been anticipating it for a while, so um, I'm, I'm really excited. Nice. Yeah, same here. You know, we go pretty way back, so it's it's good that we're reconnecting here with a uh, yep. greater, larger community uh, in yes. our world. So this, this is going to be fun today. Could be a fun show. How's uh how's there Europe? I know we're not supposed to talk about Connecticut, but let's talk about Connecticut. <laughs> how's how's the pizza scene up in Connecticut? Remember we talked about this last time we, we chatted. The, the, yeah, the pizza scene is it's really interesting. I, I I personally prefer like pizza from New York City. Um, that's that that's really good. Uh, the the this what Connecticut's kind of known for is their uh, like coal fired pizza. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. Um, but, but it, it, for me, it burns the crust a little bit too much. Um, so I prefer the, the, uh, wood grilled or, or the, 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 the uh, wood, uh, stove places up here a lot better. Um, but there's some good pizza. Uh, it's, if, if you like thin, thin pizza, um, there's some good, there's some good stuff up here. I love pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Like, I don't think yeah. there's else to say. It's just, <laughs> it could be in Connecticut, New York, wherever it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's a good thing. <laughs> And I think a lot, you know this webinar to you is give you like pizza. It's just gonna be yes. it's gonna be good and delicious. So yes. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, you know most people I think are starting to file in, so we could probably get get going. So welcome everyone, welcome to the webinar, welcome to the show. Uh, we're here today to talk about a real fun, exciting uh, time and and customer of of Cockroach Labs. I'm joined by uh, David James, who is a senior staff engineer at Spreedly. Uh, David, do you want to just do a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yes, I, I'm I'm the staff system engineer at Spreedly. Uh, I've been with Spreedly for just over four years now. Um, I have been in the the tech industry since 2000. Uh, I've worked at various size companies from Fortune 500. It's all the way down to startups. Um, and I've definitely found that the startup space appeals more to me uh, than than Fortune 500. Uh, I like the flexibility that startups mm -hmm. provide and uh, the ability to try new things, kind of get your hands dirty with lots of things and says yeah. it has, instead of having to be hyper-focused. Uh, so that's why I've kind of stuck with startups for a while. Uh, and and Spreely is, is is a really good blend of, of, of that. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. And, I, you know, I'll, I forgot, I've, I didn't even introduce myself, but I think folks might know me if you've been on the, the show before. So Chris Cassano, I run our uh, solution engineering team here in the Americas. Great to meet everyone. Welcome back. And, you know, uh, like David, I'm in the same boat, love working at startups or, or, you know, new companies where we can kind of shape the future. So I think a lot of the stuff we're going to talk today is about shaping the future and what we've done together. So this should be fun. Um, maybe let's start off first, like, you know, tell us about Spreedly. Uh, you know, okay. are, are you, are you, what, what does the company do? What are you focused on? Are you hiring? Gotcha. Uh, give yeah. us a little bit of background about your, you know, your organization. Uh, so Spreedly is a, so we are a payments orchestration platform. Uh, so we, um, we, the, our, our customers use us uh, for payments to ensure that payments can go to the, to the proper gateways so that, that, that they can receive money and provide the goods. Um, we are, we, we, we provide the APIs so that our customers don't have to worry about dealing with the routing of those traffics uh, of that traffic to make, to ensure payments are done securely um, and, and properly. Uh, another big thing we do is we also uh, vault uh, uh, private and personal information as well. Mm. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing uh, in, the, in, in the payment um, uh, space is handling that information securely and making sure that it is protected. And we take, we take that load off of, off of customer, off of, our, off of our customers. So they don't have to worry about that. Um, I've, I've been on the other side where I, I was a, not a customer of Spreely specific, but a, of a similar place. And it, it's a, it's a nightmare try, trying to worry about and think about dealing with that private information. So, um, Spreely fills a, a really good niche for that. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, as for hiring, um, we don't currently have any open positions, uh, but if you are interested in FinTech and you are interested in Cockroach DB, we definitely will, we will be having some positions that will open up later this summer. Um, and all, all the throughout our engineering department. Uh, so definitely check back with us then. Okay. That's great. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the overview. Yeah, a lot of things we're going to talk about today around security, around data consistency, around yep. transactions. 
kind of all fits where, where, where we both kind of shine, where we need to shine, yeah, right? Um, exactly. So, so this is going to be great. So maybe just talk about, uh, if you can, like your motivation for, you know, maybe modernizing your back end. Obviously, you mm -hmm. found Cockroach DB and it's, it's worked out well for you. But what was the motivation behind it? Where, you, uh, you know, I... I I, I know your background and, you know, so yeah. Yeah, we've worked with you as a customer, but pretend right. I don't know you, right? Like, gotcha. pretend, uh, you know, uh, you know, what was it that you, you had to think about when you wanted to go through these modernization efforts? What was the motivation right. behind it and how did you end up here? Yeah. So, uh, so for the longest time, um, the, 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 our primary data backend has been Rioc. Uh, so Rioc is, is another key value store. Um, and it, it, we, we utilized we, we still utilize React a lot and the, the, the powers that a key value store has where we can write and read things super fast. Um, we can get replicate, the data can be replicated in, within a cluster very fast so the data is consistent and reliable. Um, and that's been the primary backbone for, for a very long time. Um, eventually we ran into two scenarios where we needed some more complex SQL queries that, uh, that React just couldn't provide. Um, it's really good for key value, but if you want to do joins and, and mergers and all that stuff that, that a, a traditional SQL database would provide, it it kind of falls apart there. Um, so our solution at the time was to kind of, was to scrub the data that we that we have and ship it off to a a uh, a SQL database for us to store so that we can utilize that for that type of queries. Um, and that's worked fairly well. Um, uh, but as our data has grown. Uh, we have we we realize that it's it's becoming untenable to maintain both types of databases, mm -hmm. um, as well as trying to keep up with the amount of data and ensuring that we that we are cleaning up data in a proper in a proper way, uh, so that we're not retaining data for you know forever. Um, so we started looking around with that. Um, we knew we wanted to keep uh, or, or continue to use a key value store because it is uh, like I said, we need to we need to make sure that reads and writes are super fast. So we wanted to do that. Um, we knew obviously we still needed to have a, a, a SQL esque database so that we could make those those complex queries. And as we looked, we found CockroachDB, and we were like, "Wow!" I mean, we were like, "It literally is like what we've been looking for and what we've been using in two separate products, just in one." Yeah. Um, and uh, and some of the the um, extra benefits that we really loved was that CockroachDB is cloud centric, like it was written for the cloud. Uh, as great as React is and has been for us. It was written at a time where you know on-prem hardware was like the the default, and that's mm -hmm. kind of how that system was written. Um, the company that ran Rioc has unfortunately gone out of business, so there have really haven't been updates to keep it update and modernized with the current you know technology and and the way things are have gone. Um, and Cockroach filled that need uh, beautifully. Um, another major thing we have to really consider being in the payments orchestration uh, environment is compliance as well. Um, and CockroachDB is PCI compliant, SOC 2 compliant. And those are major things that they're, they are, we have to have this. Like there's no way we, we, we would you know, exist as a business without the, those compliances. Uh, and so it just, it just fit really nicely. Um, and yeah, so that's why we went with Cockroach TV. Uh, is it, it just it, it, it seemed to check all the boxes and then have some extras that we are we are itching to take advantage of. Cool. Yeah. So kind of you know kind of simplifying your architecture and then you know yes. like you said bringing the bringing the table stake pieces there around security and compliance and so forth. So that that's yep. terrific. One thing yep. I did forget to say is I've got to mm -hmm. tell the audience about what we're going to talk about today as far as <laughs> not, as far as knowledge and then also what you can get as far as. Uh, you know, possibly even getting a, excuse me, I'm going all over the place here, uh, even winning a t-shirt. So the session today is going to be somewhat a, a beginner to intermediate. As you can see, like David's going to dip into a little bit more of the architecture and decision-making and so forth. So we'll definitely have some technical speak. Um, you know, the recording will be available later, uh, you know, after we've, we've finished the webinar. And then you can also have the ability to, to win this t-shirt if you ask some good questions. So we do have the chat and the QA open. If you can use the QA, it's just a little bit easier for navigating all the, all the uh, great questions that the audience is going to ask today. And then, yeah, you can even win a T-shirt. So, sorry, I had to take that quick pause just to oh, no worries. Uh, remind the audience about all this stuff. So let's get back to the good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so thanks for telling us about the motivation and where you were with React and uh, in your architecture. Um, 
when you started exploring options, right? So you know, obviously you landed on cockroach. What were some yeah. of like the success criteria that you had? You know, I mean, you, I think you kind of outlined that from an architectural standpoint. Yeah. But what were some yeah. other pieces? You know, not just the table stake things, but um, if you can get into anything around, you know, the performance or the characteristics or yeah. uh, SQL flexibility, any of those things that that were important to you during the evaluation process. Yeah, from 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 an operational standpoint, uh, there, there were a number of things that we wanted to address um, that that Rioc is a little bit difficult uh, to, to do. Um, like one of the biggest ones is um, being able to go multi-region. Uh, eventually, uh, Rioc doesn't. It doesn't really have a concept or it doesn't have a way of knowing how to do that uh, in, in, in a coherent yeah. way. Um, we also um, we're also looking for uh, an easier way to scale um, as well if, if we need to. Um, and where we were looking for uh, easier ways to handle uh, the, the time to live or in data retention uh, mm. of our data um, and, and that the with the like the the, the news the, the cdc rules that are coming out that that was a that was a big check mark for that was that we could set those rules uh and know that um that that the old data will be cleared out and we don't have to worry about managing that um and then um I, like i said the one of the big motivations was getting a more cloud-friendly database um mm -hmm. We 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 migrated to the cloud a few year, a few years ago from on prem, and so like we were like we we're we were ready to like fully embrace the cloud, like utilize a technology that was built specifically for that, or at least at least built with it in mind. Um, and uh, it's it, it, it's it's worked really well. Um, and yeah, yeah, and you know, just thinking back a couple of years ago when we started the you know the the partnership here too one thing i think i always appreciated about spreely is that you kind of walked into the pool you just didn't jump right into the deep end yeah it was yes a very methodical process as far as right. like testing things out onboarding um the operational pieces so it, you know it's been a, a like a like nice slow steady swim like right right yeah. into the pool so uh <laughs> you know we have some customers that just jump right into the deep end jump right into multi-region and okay if things are set on fire but you know it was yeah, good to like yeah. you guys be a little bit more methodical you know as far as adoption and so forth so yeah we we, we definitely take our times with that um you know processing payments is, is is a critical function for a lot of our for a lot of our customers and um some customers can have like retries like like if it's a monthly subscription mm -hmm. things like that but we have a lot of customer customers where it's basically like point of sale so like that transaction has to go through right then or you or they're going to lose that sale so um, you know, as we went down this, we needed to make sure that we were ensuring that those transactions were going through without issue. Uh, I apologize if you guys can hear the sirens in the back. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we definitely tend to take a methodical approach, especially when it impacts our data. Um, and, uh, and we, we will definitely continue to do that. Um, uh, but that's, that's the, that's one of the great things about Cockroach DB is it allows us to do that and allows us the ability to, to test things and verify things before we roll it into production. Good. That's great. And then, um, and anyway, did the cloud help you more as far as doing the, you know, that type of testing than, than, than doing it on-prem? Like, was there any benefits to using the cloud that help you with the, you know, the, uh, your like operational I, I, scale, I would say? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think for us, uh, getting, having a database that is, that is cloud centric uh, makes us feel a lot more comfortable for AZ failures. Yeah. Uh, multi, you know, re regional failures. Once we get to where where we are going, multi-region with the database, like it, it brings those things. Uh, it, it allows us to, to be able to, to think about those and contemplate those without having to like jerry rig something. Like we know that those are those are you know hardened features within CockroachDB. So we know when we get to that point where we want to do, utilize that, like it's there. It's not something that we're we're not going to have to write scripts. We're not going to have to right. like you know, do some kind of hacky stuff to make it make it work like we're confident it'll work. But at the same time, whenever you have a hacky solution, sometimes you're just like a little, uh, you know, and uh, when it came to when it comes to the, our, our data, like we don't want we we don't want to have that unsettled feeling. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Like trying to create scripts for fail over, fail back, testing that out, testing the old yes. types of different scenarios. Is, is, yeah, that's that's a lot of testing that needs to be done. Yes. A lot of work that needs to be done. A lot of things can go wrong. A database that mm -hmm. takes care of that for you automatically is, is kind of nice without having that, I guess, kind of yeah. operational burden. Yeah. And we, 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 one benefit that we have, uh, we, I didn't I didn't fully think about it, but as we integrated CockroachDB into our workflows is the fact that um, there are there is a container for the, for, for the database. 
it actually allowed us to integrate it into our into our developers environments into mm. our staging environment and then into production a lot easier so now we now we know whenever our developers are working they're using like the same version of cockroach gp that we're using out in production uh so th like throughout our testing scenarios uh for code as well as for infrastructure like we're we're even more confident that the when we're testing like we're testing correctly and we're, we're and we're, we're we're able to catch any edge case scenarios before they potentially get to production nice very cool yeah. um well listen i know we, we hit on this one a little bit earlier but maybe we can dig a little deeper into you know some of the security and compliance standards that you have and yeah you know you're, you're, you're just, you know there's obviously you know probably pci is something that you follow too but i'm sure you have your yes. own standards and operating procedures of how you want to handle whether mm -hmm. it's you know um encryption or incidents and so forth do you maybe want to just talk about a little bit around your you know um security posture and how you view compliance and how mm -hmm. uh, how the implementation went as far as trying to uh fit within you know the security standards that you you know that you need to support yeah 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 uh, yeah so for as far as uh comply like the the PCI is is basically like that's the the rule book we follow um that mm -hmm. is our that that is the um hard and set rules uh, that, that, that we go by. Uh, and that was that was definitely one of the um, the pod, like one of the things uh, most encouraging things about Cockroach DB is the on-prem uh, version of it is already PCI compliant. At the, I think when we first started, the cloud version wasn't, but now it is. So if we needed to use like Cockroach DB in the cloud for for certain projects or whatever, we're comfortable knowing that the that it's PCI compliant now. So like we we could potentially use that. So those types of so that 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 just was was a huge check check box check mm -hmm. box for us. Um, and then as far as encryption and stuff like that, um, we have an in, an in house encryption algorithm that we use uh, to to secure that data. Um, but knowing that out of the box, um, the 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 connections from our applications to CockroachDB. They're out of their they're secured using SSL certificates and all that. Like like and the ease of setting that stuff up just made everything like it was just like a cherry on top. Like it was so easy to just generate those client certificates, have them in place, and then it just works. Like it's just everything just works. Uh, you didn't really have to you didn't you didn't have to jerry rig anything. You didn't have to like force it to work. Yeah. Um, it was it was just there, and it just it just takes that operational burden, you know off of our shoulders and we just we, we, we can fully trust the application nice yeah very cool very cool um maybe you know overall the overall experience you know you, you sound pretty positive i'm sure there's some negatives yeah. around you know things you probably yeah. <laughs> wish we you know that cockroach did or how the implementation could have been done different could maybe yeah. could have been on the migration side what were like some of the uh you know if you think back over the course of i guess three years or so what mm -hmm. things would you have done different? What things you wish maybe Cockroach had in place so that would make your life e easier? Let's be honest. Like, let us know. Yeah, us know, I mean, not all the good, but the bad too. <laughs> uh, I I will say, I mean, the the um, one huge benefit for me was the documentation. Uh, the documentation is super clear uh, to the point. Um, and if there was anything ever missing, I I and I contacted our reps like within you know hour within an hour at most. Like I had an answer back, so the responsiveness from uh, from, from our liaisons has been excellent. Um, we we decided to deploy CockroachDB uh, using Nomad, so that's not in a like an officially documented like yeah. methodology. Um, so I, I you know obviously if that was documented and like if there were examples of that, that would have made my life a little bit easier. But yeah. at the same time, um, it's so, it, it it was it was so straightforward. Like like being able to do it. I was able to look at a lot of the stuff that is being happening that happens in Kubernetes, the Helm charts, all that stuff, and like see how that stuff is working, and then apply it in Nomad, mm -hmm. and then or then within our Hashi stack, and it it works, uh, and 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 it just works really well. Um, so the flexibility that Cockroach gives you um, was was to me was 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 really good. Like there wasn't a wasn't a set in stone way. <laughs> um, which can be good and it can be bad. Obviously, you know, it's, sometimes you're, you're like, you know, yes, I have five different ways, but like, what is the preferred way? Like, what is the way you guys recommend? Um, and, you know, and, and if I ever got stuck in those situations, I was, I always got really good positive feedback from that as well. So, um, yeah, I, I would think that would be the, the only, the only like little, you know, Snafu. thing that I would comment is like, is like, cause Nomad is a, is an orchestration tool that is that's up and coming. It's not as big as Kubernetes, but it, there are more people um, utilizing it. 
And I think, and honestly, Nomad fits in well with, with CockroachDB and they can be used uh, together um, very smoothly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. We, we do have a good partnership with Hashi too. And, mm -hmm. you know, we only have a handful of customers using Nomad, but yeah, it does right. work well. I know we don't have all the docs for it and so forth, uh, Yeah, but yeah. I'm glad you're able to kind of, you know, work through it. And I, I think we helped work through it with you. I know we right. had a, I might just plug someone. So I know uh, Stephen Hand from our team has worked really yes. close with you. Stephen's yeah, he, is great. He's, he's been awesome. He really yeah. has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his, and, his knowledge and not just CockroachDB, but databases in general. Um, like, like I, I've, I've had random database questions that I'm like, I know it doesn't specifically apply, but like it just popped in my head and I'm like, I know Steven knows the answer to this. So I'm just yeah. going to ping him. And sure enough, you know, within like 20 minutes, like he's replying with an answer. I'm like, man, it's having that, having him as a resource has, has been awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, let's see what else. I mean, what else is on your wish list? Like where, you know, as you think about the future of Spreedly and where you're going, mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't even have to be about with cockroach, but what in general are, are you, you know, um, do you wish you can have either, you know, uh, a better technology or a better feature or something else that can help improve, you know, where you want to, where you want to take Spreedly and, and the, uh, in, in your architecture? Yeah, that's, that is, that's a great question. Uh, I, I don't really know because I, I I think we 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 have a we have a pretty decent idea where we want to go tech, from like a stack wise. We want to push deeper into uh, into the hashy stack and into containerization, mm. um, and and we know that will um, help us uh, deploy things faster, more reliably. Um, honestly, it's just time, like having the time to actually work on that, um, you know, and having like like we we're like we are pushing the our cockroach DB migration. And like, like we're, we're chomping at the bit. Like we, we want to get all of our data over there, but we, but we know we need to, to take methodically. We know we need to, you know, we, we need to take our time and make sure we're doing everything correctly. So it's really just about time for, for right now for us is just, you know, doing the, doing things correctly. So we do not negatively impact customers uh, and just taking full advantage of the new tools we have. Uh, that's, I think that, that that's the exciting thing is, is I know we have these new tools. I know we have new opportunities to simplify things and automate things a lot more. I'm, I'm huge on that. Is trying to automate as much as we can. Um, so I'm just I, I'm I'm I'm, ex, I'm super excited about that, and, and can't wait to start start doing that type of stuff. Nice, very yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, good. I'm just going to oh, quick time check. All right, so we can go to you know, I think the audience would like to ask you a few questions if that's okay too. We've had a couple of questions come through the Q and A, so I might okay. give you a, a couple if that's all right. Um, that's fine. That's fine. If I can help you out. I certainly will. So we have a question from Peter. He's curious about data volumes and influx rate. So how much latency can you tolerate between ingests and results being reflected in the query results? Um, I don't know the the the, the, um, the precise amount, but I know it's uh, it's like seconds. It's it has to be quick. Um, and a, a lot of times um, we are having to offset the throughput with talking with gateways as well because we have to factor that in. Because uh, we have, so we have to receive the information. We have to talk with the gateway. They have to process it and then send us back the information. So it's this fast, the faster we can get our stuff done and send it to the gateway, that allows us to give more time for the gateways to do whatever they need to do. Or we have to figure out, is this gateway degraded for whatever reason? And if so, do we need to switch to another gateway? Um, so the faster, the better. Um, and we, we, we have not seen... Uh, we haven't really said, we, we we have not seen a drop in, in performance but as we've migrated to Cockroach to be uh, it has been spot on um and that's pretty much out of the box we've done some tuning um uh, but we, but we we have we haven't had a we haven't had a reason to tune too much quite uh, too much yet that's awesome yeah you may you know and then there's a kind of another follow up question that kind of kind of in this vein so this you know the last question is around data volume and latency the next ones are really around uh, concurrent payment transactions. So mm -hmm. Raul is asking, you know, what were your considerations that you took with Cockroach GB for concurrent payment transaction issues, such as things like double spending? Um, most of that is, is honestly is handled in our, in our application. Um, so th that, that wasn't a thing that we worry too much about from the data perspective. Um, we, um, we, we, once, once we have migrated over to Cockroach GB, there are we are going to be looking at the data data set itself and seeing how we can trim it down because we know we have excess data from various things, uh, but uh, that's difficult to do right now when we have data in two separate locations. 
Um, so we, you know, within the React database and, and then within our RDS database, that makes it very difficult to kind of trim that data down and do it in a safe way. Uh, once we get everything consolidated, then we know, you know, it's one location and we can query it and we can, you know, we can go through and prune the stuff that doesn't need to be there now. Okay. All right, cool. Um, we have a few other questions. I think some, uh, you know, uh, folks might've missed along the way and that's okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Rahul also asked, is Spreedly using a dedicated server or the self-hosted version? So I uh, might've missed this, but go ahead. I'll yes. Let, so, so we, we, so right now, so we are deploying CockroachDB via Nomad. Um, and Nomad is a sim, it's a con container orchestration uh, tool. So it's similar to Kubernetes, but not as large as, as, as Kubernetes. Um, what, what we did do is, so what we do have is we have dedicated uh, hosts that run uh, a single instance of the database, um, but it's all, it's still all controlled through Nomad and it's all, and, and we, we have, we have defined that within the job spec itself that, that Nomad has. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, one other person. So Steve is just asking, are you replacing uh, React with Cockroach over time? Yes. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Been... We're. We're slowly moving uh, workflows over. We're slowly moving data over, uh, and and eventually at the at the end, React will go away, uh, as well as uh, our uh, our SQL database, and everything will be hosted within Cockroach TV. Okay, cool. And then you know probably the last question we have here, unless anyone else is going to ask a question while while we deliver this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kind of talks about what we a little bit what we talked about earlier, but maybe we can dig into this a little bit more. But uh, you know, Lynn is looking for any advice on handling data security and compliance. So mm -hmm. payment, payment infrastructure must adhere to stringent data and security requirements such as PCI. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you have for working within this type of environment? Oh, that's a that is a great question. Um, uh, like I, I think the approach that, that that we have taken where the encryption happens um, within our application and then the data is stored in the in the data stored in the database encrypted um, that I, I i I like that method like as um, as great as Cockroach DB is like we know we have to be very sensitive and very uh, you know strict about about our data access um, so like like just having those separated uh, is is really good. Um, we're we're always looking for better ways to do it, uh, but it gives us a little bit better control over um, over that over key rotations uh, th th things like that. Uh, I mean, th there's a lot there's a lot of different ways you can do it, um, and um, the, the the main thing is is you know utilizing products that are PCI compliant themselves, like making sure that whatever tool you use. Um, has gone through that process uh, and and has that and has those uh, compliances in place. Cool, awesome. Thanks for that. And yeah. probably the last question we have for you today, and uh, not sure if you know this. I know I can kind of answer some of this too. But uh, okay. Ran, Ran, uh, Ranganath is asking, does CockroachDB support JTA like uh, Adamikos? I don't know too much about Adamikos. I wonder if he means JPA. I wonder if it's I Java type I don't of question. Yeah, I, I I don't know. But I say if if that's Java, I don't know a lot about Java, uh, yeah. so I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> so I, I could probably help yeah. you out here, right? Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, we're you know Java is a first class language with cockroach. I think maybe you mean JPA. So JPA is perfectly fine if you want to build a Spring app too. That totally it's totally cool. Adam Ecos, I'm not sure. I'd probably have to look in to see what that. Maybe I'll just do a quick search here, see what that's all about. But um, I need need the transaction management for Java. Um, yeah. All right. So it's a Java related. So I haven't heard of any of our customers using, using Adam Ecos, but yeah, we do. Uh, you know, if you think about Cockroach, it does distributed transactions. And there's a lot of examples that we have in our documentation. If you're working with JPA or you're working with Spring or, or Hibernate as far as how to, how to um, handle transactions within Cockroach. So uh, one thing you'll always notice about us is that Cockroach is always consistent. So one thing you might always get is retries. Of, of a transaction that might have, might be contending with another transaction. And the examples that we have in the documentation tell you how to, you know, work through, you know, re, you know retries that might be coming up from some of the transaction workloads that, that you might have. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful, hopefully it is, but uh, that's kind of like where we stand with, uh, with Java, for, like, like I said, first class, uh, first class language for Cockroach. 
Um, do, do, do. Oh, we do have one last question. We have a minute left. So maybe we'll ask, <laughs> do one more last question and then we'll wrap it up. But um, Antonio is asking, what is your resiliency, resiliency testing strategy? This is a great question, yeah. right? How do you, that, how do you test that resiliency? Is. Um, that, that is a great question. We're actually working through that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I don't have uh, like a, a solid concrete answer. Um, I know we, I know we went, um, as we were configuring Cockroach DB, um, we worked closely with Steven and, um, and we made sure that, um, what we wanted to do was when we deployed it, we wanted to get the cluster ready to go multi-region, even though right now we're, 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 we're in a single region. Um, we wanted to make sure that when we deployed it, we were, we were a, a, a able to survive at least one, either one node or one AZ going down. Um, and we have tested that. Like we put data in our staging environment um, and shut down a node. We were still able to access it. So we did some of the, some basic testing like that um, just to verify, you know, trust, but verify, making sure all that stuff works correctly. So we've done that, uh, but we're, we're, we're coming up with um, more test strategies and more and more ways to ensure that the data integrity is is there and what we expect. Um, and uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll have the that stuff done pr pretty quickly. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so you know we're just at the top of the half hour here. There's one last thing I just want to uh, mention. I don't know. Hopefully, everyone can see my screen again. But uh, yeah. we do have an exciting event coming up in October, October third to fourth, here in New York City. This is our second year we're doing this event. It's a customer event. So if you want to see how our customers have been successful, like David, uh, David, maybe hopefully you'll speak at the event. But it's yeah. a fantastic event for customers as well as folks interested in cockroach to collaborate with each other, learn. Uh, figure out what use cases are good, what's not the good, what are some of the best practices. The one thing I love about this event is the honesty that comes out of it. So we've had, you know, pretty big marquee customers come up and explain, hey, we've had all the success, but here's where we would love cockroach to improve or be better. And all that stuff is great because our product team is there and they can get this feedback and we can hear from multiple customers so that we can continue to get better and better. Great event. If you're interested, there's a uh, URL here, just roachfest.cockroachlabs.com. Uh, I want to give a special thank you to David James today and the just for the team for being such a great partner with us and uh, you know going you know like we said walk walk into the pool as opposed to just jumping in yeah <laughs> jumping in and cannonballing so it's been an <laughs> awesome journey and uh, you know uh, collaboration with you and I, again I appreciate you jumping on the, the webinar and on the show today and and telling more about your experience so thank you yes. David it was a pleasure being here uh, thank you for having me Chris cool. Well, thanks everyone. Have a great, great day. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.